The morning milking at the Angus family farm at Ondert in southwest Victoria starts well before dawn. By sunrise, Dale Angus and his co-worker have finished milking. Yeah, we milk mainly Frisian cows. We've got a few crosses in amongst them there. We're uh, milking 367 there at the moment. They're doing about 24 litres and 1.8 solids a day. Milk solids refers to the dried powder left after the water is removed from liquid milk. And that's what processors pay for. At present, there's fierce competition for it, but producing it takes serious commitment. Seven days a week, 365 days a year. Um, yep, Dale's out of bed, uh, 4.45 every morning. And we have cups on here at 5.15 every morning. We're exceptionally lucky that we've got a really strong team of employees behind us as well. We can't run this operation by ourselves. Just now, the pre-dawn alarm isn't so painful. Milk is in short supply, and that's bringing record prices for dairy farmers. They're getting paid around $10. So what's causing it? Longer term, we have seen that flat or declining Australian milk pool. And so the milk pool here in Australia is quite uh, constrained. There's not a lot of milk available. Um, but at the same time, in the last year or two, we've seen um, the same thing happening on a global scale. The competition among processors is fierce, pushing the milk price to new levels. I think the increase in price is, is driven really by uh, two things. One is uh, strong local demand for milk, new entrants into the market, uh, the bigger players and players like ourselves uh, growing, uh, which is a fantastic story. So that increased demand and then couple that with you know, limited supply or reduction in supply is putting the competition at the highest level and that really is coming through at, at higher farm gate prices. All of that is good news to dairy farmers. So global milk production has been tracking below last year and while demand has been quite stable, um, that means that there's tight, tight milk supplies everywhere. And so we've seen commodity prices moving up and, uh, and that's being passed through the farm gate. Buller Dairy Foods produces a range of ice cream, table cream, yoghurt, sour cream, cottage cheese and imitation cream under various brands. Three quarters of it is for the Australian market, the remainder to export. We're a proud family business, 112 years. You know, we've lived through world wars, famines, droughts, uh, and we're really excited. I think this is a really exciting time for, for Australian dairy, and, and Bulla is just really proud to be part of that success story. At present, the dairy industry is buoyant. It's a far cry from where it was a few short years back. On April the 27th, 2016, Murray Goulburn, then Australia's largest milk processor, announced it was immediately and retrospectively reducing its milk prices. Suppliers had been banking on a milk price of around $5.60 per kilogram milk solids, but that was cut to between $4.75 and $5. Suddenly, farming businesses across southern Australia found themselves in debt to the co-op. We had a lot of farms exiting uh, in the wake of the step downs and those, those challenging seasons as well. Rebecca Casey was one of the thousands of dairy farmers caught in the crossfire. For her and her husband, it meant the loss of two years' income. And to have corporate come in and put us in this position is just absolutely gut-wrenching. This is the... This is... This is our family stuff. The Casey's managed to weather the financial storm, but ultimately, Murray Goulburn, a farmer-run cooperative, was sold to Canadian multinational Saputo. Murray Goulburn's CEO, Gary Hallou, was fined $200,000 by the corporate regulator for knowingly misleading farmers about their financial returns. At present, the Casey's farm, a stone's throw from the seaside town of Inverloch in eastern Victoria, is enjoying a good season. 
So these are our autumn carvers. So these ones range from 12 weeks to 22 weeks of age. Um, they've only just recently been weaned. Rebecca Casey has been dairying for 16 years. She and husband Glenn have been at this property for 10. It's been really interesting. We've had some really big highs and we've had a couple of lows, but we've managed to get through. And kind of extremes on each side. There's been really good times and then some really gruelling times. Yeah, but I think history of dairy tells you that that's what dairy's all about. Yeah, this property for 10 Rebecca years says now. it was a very hard lesson, but a beneficial one. I have moved further away from the actual dairy farming. I still milk twice a day and I still rare calves, but I'm definitely more across the business side of it than I was prior to 2016. At a quick glance, milk prices have roughly doubled since Murray Goulburn's 2016 cut. But that doesn't mean their business is doing twice as well. Rebecca has crunched the numbers. I was looking back at our historical figures and this time five years ago we were paying about $360 for fertiliser. We're up to $1,390 for fertiliser. Grains also increased by over 30%. Electricity's increased, labour's increased. So from back in 2016, my actual operational plus labour costs have increased by 181% and my milk prices only increased by 63%. Buller says it has cost pressures all the way along its production chain. We recognise that farm costs are high as well and uh, you know, whilst you have a, you know, a higher farm gate price, the input costs are high as well. And what that means for us equally is, you know, our costs are, have gone up, uh, but it's not just dairy. It's, it's, it's all across all, all uh, categories, all product types. Um, so, yeah, you know, the cost base has increased and it's up to us now to, to kind of work with our customers about, you know, how we can pass these increases through. So what does this mean for consumers? With family finances increasingly coming under pressure, analysts say they tend to buy cheaper products from the dairy cabinet at the supermarket. That means there's less money flowing back to processors and in turn, less available for dairy farmers. The major supermarkets have already increased the cost of home brand milk and branded products are also set to rise. The prices that we're at just now, um, yeah, we have to put that these increases through to our customers and that's what we're working with. But I think if, if the industry works in partnership with our customers, um, it is going to impact consumers, you know. You will be paying more on shelf uh, for your dairy products. But if we can do that in a sustainable way, then I actually think that, that everyone can, can benefit from it. But high input costs aren't the only thing keeping the Casey's awake at night. The threat of foot and mouth disease arriving in Australia and the impact it would have on markets is also front of mind. If foot and mouth does arrive on our doorstep, by the time it's here, it's too late. We had the conversation last week about selling up, selling all the cows, just because of the external threat that we're currently facing. So is Buller worried about retaining its dairy farmer suppliers? I think we've got a really good relationship with our suppliers. We made a very strong commitment on being competitive. Yeah, um, you know, very proud dairy business. Uh, we need milk. So we really have to build a very credible relationship uh, with our suppliers based on trust, honesty, transparency. And I think that's really stood us in good stead. And, and you know, whilst there's been increased competition this year, we've retained a large, large part of our supplier base. We've attracted new suppliers. I think people really love the Australian family dairy story. You know, we're not a global multinational. You know, we're a proud Aussie business. Privately, among senior industry figures, there's a belief that some of the newer processors may not survive paying such high prices. Ultimately, Australia is a small player on the world stage, and if there is a marked increase in global dairy production, prices are sure to fall. So if we see a really strong New Zealand season in the spring, if we see large volumes coming out of Europe and the US, which, which we're not seeing at the moment, you know, that's what starts to really upset the apple cart. Uh, and, and so far we haven't seen those indications yet. 
but analysts say it's inevitable. The chances are when, when things turn, we will see a deep correction. At present, the Angus family and dairy communities more broadly are enjoying the change in fortunes. Oh, I think there's definitely positive mood around. You talk to the young people around and they're positive about it. We went into it because we love it. Um, and I guess the, the, the money, you wouldn't do it if it was zero money in it, I guess. You've got to make money at the end of the day. But um, we do it because we love it. We love the lifestyle. We love what it gives to our family, our children growing up on the land. Um, yeah, the money is, is just an added bonus, I guess. So we would have done it anyway. We're really happy, obviously, that it has picked up and it continues to perform really strong and we're really hopeful for our future in dairying.